All right, let's talk about hunting new properties. All right, and that can be really intimidating when you walk into a brand new piece of property and it's really looking good like that back through there and you go, okay, now what? Uh, you know, whether you're here out of state and you only got like four or five days like the, to hunt like I do most of the time if you hunt multiple states during a, a season or if you're maybe just a weekend warrior that just gets to hunt Saturday and Sunday and maybe your season only lasts uh, you know like three weeks well that's only six days you got to hunt or maybe it lasts uh, six weeks like, like ours does and you got 12 days to hunt an entire season so you don't have a whole lot of time to hunt but you kind of want to figure out what's what's kind of happening out there if you get a, a, a new piece of property um, and you're trying to learn it really quick and be successful because you don't want to waste the whole season just walking around with a gun with a turkey call in your mouth calling and getting discouraged because nothing's happening because you really don't know the property and you've already messed things up because you didn't know how to hunt it effectively anyway so here's kind of what i do uh when when it comes to hunting a place where i've never been on before so here's kind of how i put it together and you know year after year I'm successful going to a place where I've never been and killing turkeys. First thing I do is I want to get up high. I want to get on the highest place of the property, if all possible, uh, and I want to listen. I want to put my ears on the most ground that I can uh, and listen for turkeys to gobble at daylight. Now, once they gobble, I'm not going to run after them. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to observe and figure out why that they're there and who's where, where's the property line, and kind of figure out if they're on the property I can hunt, if they're on the property I can't hunt, how close he is to the border of that property. And I want to figure out, you know, if I'm lucky enough to hunt a really good place, which don't happen very much, but a really good place where you got five or six gobblers gobbling, you know, at daylight. You go, man, there's two over here. There's one over here. There's two over here. You know, man, you're just, you know, and you're sitting there going, man, I can hunt all of them. And so it kind of gets like, oh, which one do I go to first? And there's, there's that instinct, you know, you want to just run after the closest one. That's, the, that's your instincts. Oh, he's closer. Let's go to him. But that might be the wrong turkey to go to. That might be the one that's the wrong one to go to because, he might not be as workable as this one over here um, and he may be further so you kind of just got to sit back and observe and tell yourself that first day and this is kind of what I do I tell myself the first day that I'm on a new piece I'm kind of already you know gave myself a lecture that I'm really not hunting that day now I've got a shotgun and I've got my turkey calls my turkey vest and I'm you know so I'm legally hunting but I'm, I've already given myself a pep talk that, listen, don't expect miracles and don't expect to go in here and kill a turkey the first day. If it happens, great, because I've done it, you know, a few times. Go in there and the first day, you know, be done in two hours. And, and that's great what it happens. But I'm not really expecting that. What I'm really doing is I'm learning the property for them hours that I can be out there, whether I can hunt half a day legally or whether I can hunt all day, I'm gonna learn as much about this property as possible day one. But while these turkeys are gobbling at daylight, I'm gonna mark where they're at and I'm gonna figure out why they're there. Now, what do you mean why they're there? Well, I'm gonna see what's, what's around them. If they're gobbling on a fence line over here, and they're on the border of the fence, but they're on the property I can hunt, but right across the fence, about you know, 50, 60 yards or 100, there may be a big old uh, cornfield or whatever the case on property I can't hunt. Then, you know, you kind of kind of know hens are going to go probably to the field and he's going to go with them and you can't, you know. <laughs> and then I'm going to sit back and go, well, what's over here? Well, if this is a hardwood ridge and fingers and all this, this, this turkey's probably flying down. He's getting on a ridge and he's just kind of sitting up there and he's kind of with his hens or maybe he's by himself, whatever the case. So you, you just, you, you try to just kind of figure it out why they're there and what, what's going on with them on the roost. But a lot of people make the mistake by just running after turkeys as soon as they hear one because that instinct, oh, let's, let's go set up like they do on videos and we'll kill them. But that's not really the right thing to do. You sit back and you observe on day one. Now, once it gets a little bit later in the day, then you can start putting a strategy get to, to, together. But here's what I do even on day one after they fly down and everything gets quiet. If I'm on a small piece, let's say a piece like this where it's only about 75 acres, okay, I'm not going to be running through there all day long calling and just, you know, I'm not going to be doing that. 
because you're going to spook more turkeys on a small piece of property like this doing that than you are uh, just going through there real slow and just easing through there and but you can still figure out this property and do it the right way okay because a lot of people hunt a small piece of property like they do a thousand acres and you can't do that you're gonna be blowing turkeys out of there left and right and that's why you ain't hearing none after about two days and they and you're well, what happened to them well you've already messed the whole thing up so what I'm going to do on day one is I'm going to kind of stay on the outside perimeter of this property and I'm going to just kind of ease through there for, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I want to see what's on the other side of the you know, your property you can't hunt and I want to see where the low spots are in that fence because if the turkeys is over here on land you can't hunt, I want to find out. I want to walk the fence line on my side and I want to stay legal and I want to walk it and I want to find out the blow places in that fence and I'm going to remember them in my head or, or mark them down on my map uh, on Onyx or whatever you choose to use and I'm going to mark the low the low places in that fence because everywhere there's a fence just about there's places where the cattle has pushed it down or maybe there's a gap that maybe you know this big underneath the fence that they can get through. Turkeys will cross a fence if it's easy to cross. So if you're up here and he starts gobbling on day two or three or whatever the case, and he's up here and and you're you're over here instead of trying to call, I get down before I won't even call to him. I'll get down to that low place in that fence, and then I'll sit there where I can see it and I'll call to him because a lot of times he knows where that low place is because they cross it every day because they live out there. And a lot of times they'll come right to that place and come right under that fence, but you can be sitting there waiting for them instead of being 60 yards up the hill. And you know, and and maybe not kill him at all, or, you know. So I try to see where these places are that they can easily cross, uh, and that's kind of where I want to remember. Now sometimes it don't work. Sometimes you got to go somewhere else, and that's fine. I'm just telling you what I do on day one because I want to figure this stuff out. So if I need it, I can go back in my mind and say, oh, okay, well he gobbles here. I'm gonna before I go over here, I'm gonna go down here where that low place is and start calling, see if I can work him down that way. So. I'm going through there slow. Now, am I calling? Yeah, I'm gonna call, of course. I'm out there, I'm out, I'm out there calling and you know, actually hunting, even though I'm t I've told myself I'm not really hunting on day one. I'm still calling and I'm still trying to sound like a turkey going through there, because you never know. But if one gobbles, you know, he's answering me, we'll go hunt him then. Okay, now you're hunting. But observe, look around, and don't be trying to chase different turkeys on day one, because you're gonna mess yourself up on day two, three, four, and on down the road. That's what I do, and that's how I've become successful at hunting new properties in new states and you know, being successful at killing turkeys uh, in multiple places. Another thing I do is I try to find out food. I want to find out what they're feeding on. I want to find out, you know, are they feeding in the field, uh, the neighbor's field, or maybe a field on the place you can hunt? Are they out there feeding uh, when they fly down? Are they congregating there? Or are they feeding in, the, you know, deep woods, maybe on browse and stuff? So I'm looking on the ground. I'm looking for scratching. I'm looking for uh, fresh sign. I'm looking for roost feathers. I'm observing all this, but I'm doing it slow and quiet. You don't be herding off through the woods like a herd of elephants. Go slow. And a lot of times you'll pick up so much information and then you're ready to start hunting. And boy, then you can become a turkey killer. So find the food and find out where the turkeys are at on that property and where they're congregating at on day one and find the places in the fence, find the creek crossings, find the places that can hang up a turkey. Remember it, mark it down in, a, in some notes on your phone or whatever the case. And when turkeys start gobbling on day two and three and four, whatever the case, then you know what you're dealing with. Instead of running through the woods, you know, the first turkey you hear that's close, you run through the woods and, and what happens, there's a lot can happen between point A and point B. And one of the things that can happen, because Lord knows when I was younger it happened to me, I hear this turkey and I didn't know what was between me and him and I start going through there trying to, you know, go kill this turkey and I start busting turkeys off between me and him. Okay, where if I'd have just been a little bit more patient, you know, this might this one might have gobbled closer and I would have known they would have been there and I wouldn't have been tracing off. Or I've done this, you know, go between me and him and he'd be gobbling and you're going through there uh, right before daylight or maybe the crack of daylight and boy, you run right into a thorn thicket, you run right into a big brushy, you know, uh, vines and all this stuff and you're making all these noise trying to get around and trying to get, because you don't know what's going on. So you need to figure all this out on day one. And boy, when you do, 
you can kind of already put the pieces together and you can be successful usually by if i'm on a new property usually by day three or day four man they're in trouble usually <laughs> and so you know because i've already got it all kind of figured out of what they're doing so you can do the same thing and it will help you especially if you're an out, out of state hunter or like i said you're just a guy that can't hunt a lot like like others can uh and you've got to kind of figure out how you can be successful when you don't have a lot of time to hunt you can do this folks it's not that hard you just got to think ahead of the turkey you got to hunt smart and you got to get this out of your mind that you can hunt them like you can on a 2,000 acre ranch somewhere where it's unpressured and and you, know, you can't hunt a 70 acre piece of property like this one uh, if you're you know if if you're going through there like you are on a big ranch somewhere so you just got to hunt smart you can do this and you can be successful on these gobblers because man and when you put the pieces together it's so much worth it and it gives you a thrill and so try them little tips and uh, I believe it'll help you become a better turkey hunter. And make sure to subscribe to this channel. Just hit that subscribe button down the corner. I'd really appreciate it. Also, check me out on Patreon, all you that uh, follow Dell Outdoors and you'd like to give a small donation just to kind of help us during our turkey season when uh, some of our videos get demonetized because of the hunting content and sometimes it's deemed inappropriate because we're out here, you know, hunting with a gun and stuff. And so when things are demonetized, we don't make any money so it kind of puts a really damper on the financial part of what we're trying to do so if you want to go over to patreon just join me there and give a small donation two three four five dollars whatever the case uh, whatever you'd like to give and it would really be appreciated it'll go right back in the dell outdoors and to continue to do what we uh, love doing and teaching so many others how to be a better turkey hunter also, check out all the links below. Check me out on social media, my Facebook, my Instagram. Come follow me there. Check out DellOutdoors.com where you can uh, check out a lot of other things. Check out the shirts and the, and the uh, hoodies and, and hats. Uh, some of you have been asking about Dell Outdoor hats. They're over there on the website. Just go over there and you can uh, get yourself a hat and a shirt. Just kind of help us uh, uh, along that way. Also, check out SpringFeverCustomCalls.com where you can get my brand new slate call this year the matt dale signature series slate call uh the old slide uh and it's really been a great seller i mean slate over glass just a beautiful call and we've got so much positive feedback about it also check out my signature series of mouth calls and my box call that's been so popular the last couple of years check them out at springfevercustomcalls.com also check out uh so so outdoors um, and uh, you know, appreciate if you follow them guys too over on Facebook and check out their website. But just check out all the links below. Really appreciate it. And we'll be bringing a lot more turkey hunting content to you in the weeks to come. You stay tuned. And actually, next here in, in about a week, we'll be out chasing them old longbeards ourselves way down south. And so you stay tuned. And there's a lot more great turkey hunting action coming your way when turkey season starts. We'll see you in the next video.